Welcome everybody, Jack here from Ginger Bets and this week I'm previewing the WGC Dell Technologies match play taking place in Austin, Texas exclusively for sportspub.com and in this video I'm going to be breaking down the course, the key skill sets required and bringing you my best outright selections for this week's event. But before I do that, may I encourage you to head over to sportspub.com straight after this video because there you'll find details on how to sign up to the full Ginger Bets Golf Betting Insights weekly package that's sure to save you time when doing your golf research, make you more informed when placing your golf wages and give you an edge over the bookmakers time and time again, week in, week out, all thanks to sportspub.com. All the details are on the site on how to register. It's just a simple click of an email address and all the information will be yours direct to your inbox each and every week. But in this video, it is a detailed breakdown of the course, the key skill sets required and those all important outright picks. Let's get to it with the course and the event itself this week. Well, it's a match play event, which means it's a group stage round robin, 16 groups of four, We'll start off the tournament. Each team will play each other, player will play each other once in those group stages. And the winner of each group will go through to the last 16, which will kickstart the weekend's action. The course this week is a peak die course. It is short by PGA Tour standards. A par 71, 7,100 yards circa from the tips, which means it's short and gettable by every player's standard. But the peak die magic is in the layout and the visualization that he puts on it for the players. He decepts them with his eyes and with the sight lines that he puts forward, making off the tee shots really hard and approach play really hard, which leads me on nicely to the key skill sets that are going to be required. Well, look no further than players that have performed well on peak die tracks already in their career. Players that have performed well here have a distinct advantage over the field. Think of DJ, Cantlay, Abraham Anser, Kevin Kisner, Webb Simpson. These are guys that have excelled on Pete Dye layouts in the past and therefore they have a distinct advantage because lots of his courses are set up the same in terms of how they um, challenge the players visually from both the tee box and their approach play. Next that I want to look at is tee to green performance over the last 24 rounds. In order to win a match play event, you need your tee to green game to be in good order. And that's of recent times, not historically. When we look at majors, we may look at players that have performed well in major tournaments, might not be coming in with the most recent good form, but that's not the case in a match play. This is fast, furious, lots of games in a row, day after day, and therefore you need your tee to green game in good shape. And then want to look at green in regulations game. Quite simply, if you're hitting plenty of greens in regulation, then you're not giving away plenty of free holes to your opponent and making it hard for them to win. You're also giving yourself outside birdie looks, and that's the aim of the game in match play golf. I also want to look at bogey avoidance. It ties into my previous point, but in the match play format, we don't want to be giving away free holes, easy sh uh, holes to our opponents. We want them to battle hard and par is still a good score in the match play. It means a birdie will have to be made to beat you and it's not easy to come by birdies on these peak die tracks. And then finally, I want to look at strokes gained on the Bermuda grass putting surfaces. Yes, there is some Poana overseed this week, but I want to look at players that perform well of recent times with that putting stroke because that's going to be a key factor in determining the winner come Sunday evening. So we've got Pete Dye courses in general. We want to look at that data. We want to look at green and regulations gained. We want to look at recent tee to green performance. We want to look at bogey avoidance. And finally, to round out the five skill sets required to if that trophy comes Sunday night will be strokes gain put in performance. So let's get to it with the outright selections, the bit that you all tune in for. And boy, am I excited about the headline pick. Some of you may have already seen this, so apologies for repeating myself. But headline in the portfolio for the week, this is Dustin Johnson, 20 to 1. But MGM's the place to go and get it. He won't go off 20 to 1. He'll be 18, 16 to 1. And that's because his draw, he's against Homer, an out of form Matt Wolf, an out of form Mackenzie Hughes. And when he wins this group, he's going to come up against Lee Westwood, Bryson Dish. 
Shambo, who's injured, and Richard Bland, who's making his debut and surely out of his depth in this company. A pass to the last day is for me what I have in store for DJ, and at 20 to 1, but MGM, he will headline the portfolio. Next up is the world number one, and I won't keep you waiting. It's John Rahm, world number one, 12 to 1. Again, the draw is in his favour. He's got Munez, an out-of-form Patrick Reed, and Cam Young. He's going to take over them in the first three matches, and he'll go on to the last 16 where he can come up against Kopka. How good a matchup would that be? Brooks versus Rahm in the last 16. Oh, I'd relish that one. It'd be a great tie. Other players he could come up against. Lowry, uh, Harold Varner III and uh, Van Royen. He can take down any of those. Statistically, he's at games in great place. In terms of tee to green, he's dialed in right now. It's only his putting that's letting him down, but don't let that put you off. In this type of format, he can suffocate players by hitting green after green after green and making very few mistakes. He's going to be hard to beat. 12 to 1, but MGM's the place. John Rahm, second selection. Third up is another player at the top of the board, and he's a player that I believe's got an outstanding chance. Again, he's such a strong favourite to come through his group because he's facing an out of form Tony Finau, Lucas Herbert, and Takumi uh, Kanyana. He's going to dominate this group for sure. I'm pretty confident that he wins the group easy. He's in decent form right now. His tee to green performance has picked up of recent times. His stats on Pete Dye courses aren't great, but I'm willing, for, willing to forgive him that in the fact that his group's easy. He's returning to form. His tee to green game is dialed in right now. And if he gets that putter working in the right way, he's going to be a factor come the weekend for sure. 20 to 1, Xander Shoffle. Bet MGM's the place. Third selection of the week. And the fourth selection of the week is a man that I feel is in a tough group, but his odds reflect that. And he's got an outstanding chance if he comes through this group of dialing it in this week and taking it deep into the weekend. He's second in bogey avoidance in the top 10 in green in regulations gained he's performed well in the match play that he's played previously at the President's Cup where he went 2-2 two and two against a stellar USA side may I add and he's gained strokes putting in four of his last five events that has often been his Achilles heel at 40-1 to one, bet MGM again the place to go and get it Sun Jae-in will be the fourth and final selection to round out the portfolio but without a shadow of a doubt Dustin Johnson headline the group this week at 20 to 1. That is a standout price. Take advantage. I expect you to get value for money and real good enjoyment come the weekend with that wager. Thank you for listening. Good luck with all your selections. And don't forget, straight after this video, head over to sportspub.com. Thanks for listening and bye from me.